Hi everybody, another episode of Project Spotlight here. I'm Isaac Levin from the Marketing Committee for the Donna Foundation. I'm super excited to have Ruben from the Orleans Project join us. Hello, Ruben. Hi, Isaac. Awesome. So, Ruben, let's just get started. So, let's talk about, you know, what is Orleans? I mean, I bet a lot of people are curious. You want to give me a little high-level intro to it? Yeah, sure. So, Orleans is a framework for helping you to build distributed systems. And usually that sounds kind of scary, like what is distributed? But you can just think of it as any time that you have a bunch of instances of your application and you want to um, make them work together in a cloud native way, Orleans is good for those kinds of scenarios. So if you're running on Kubernetes or Azure App Service or any other kind of place where you've got you know, multiple instances of your app, Orleans is good help there. Awesome. So obviously it this makes like it sounds a lot like a microservice architecture, right? A lot of people talk about microservice architecture all the time. Um, so what it makes Orleans interesting for .NET developers versus, you know, more, you know, like you said, Kubernetes or using all, any of the other different mm -hmm. paradigms out there? Yeah, so um, one of the things that Orleans allows you to do is to build applications that are very, they're very .NET native, right? So they'll feel sure. like, regular .NET apps. So you're writing applications, you're using these cloud native objects that are called grains, um, and they're just .NET classes, right? And they they talk to each other by making method calls on each other. You handle errors using exceptions like try, catch, et cetera, you know, if you want to. Of course, you can pass back error codes if you want to do that as well. But basically, you've got the freedom to use .NET to its fullest, but also in a distributed way. So you can kind of treat all your Kubernetes cluster like it's one big machine, right? And and, and that's a really nice thing because it's a, a nice way of thinking about things um, so that you can take advantage of all the hardware you're paying for as well as scale out and scale in and scale up as you need and also be fault tolerant. So if one of these machines happens to go down, like maybe it's getting updates or sure. maybe someone trips on the network cable or a cosmic ray comes in and fries the CPU, like your application will recover and everything will continue on as is. And the nice thing is that as long as you program using these grades, Orleans will give you that kind of stuff for free. That's awesome. So it sounds, you know, you mentioned that it's very .NET centric. You know, uh, I believe that all of Orleans is actually written on top of .NET. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. That's awesome. It's uh, all written in C sharp. That's great. I imagine a lot of you know, developers would see Orleans and they'd say, oh, that's is completely different than how, you know, typical microservice architectures are written, right? They're using mm -hmm. Go or something else, right? I'm curious to know, Ruben, how you got started with Orleans, right? So obviously, you know, you work at Microsoft now. I'm curious as to when you got started with Orleans and what your first impressions were of it. Yeah, so um, I think it was a long time ago, maybe around 2015 or maybe even earlier. Uh, I was just working on my own thing in, in open source, uh, and and Orleans came out. I, I liked it a lot, right? I, I guess I fell in love with it, and I started contributing it, contributing to it. I think very early on, maybe even maybe even submitted the first PR to it. I don't, I don't know if oh, I wow. ninja it that quickly, but I was ready for it. I actually, um, I knew exactly what I wanted to contribute, and I heard that it was going to become open source. And so uh, as soon as it did, I said I'm going to fix this one little configuration yeah. thing. Um, and from there, I started taking on bigger and bigger tasks and. And one of the big ones in the beginning was this code generator. So Orleans has an RPC mechanism internally. So you can think of it like gRPC. Sure. Um, but I thought, well, you know, there are some new syntax features in .NET and it doesn't support everything quite well, or maybe there's, there's a few things I could fix. And so I decided, yeah, I'm going to rewrite the whole thing using Roslyn, which was a new compiler at the time. You know, now it's just the .NET C Sharp and VB compiler, but yeah. at the time Roslyn was new. And so I thought, let's try generating the code using the Roslyn APIs. Um, and so that's what we did. And, and so that was my first big contribution, but I kept contributing um, over time and eventually joined the project more formally. That's great. So it sounds to me like you initially were a fan of it, and then mm -hmm. you got into contributing how a lot of people do. They, they want to either open up issues or uh, contribute via submitting code themselves. So, you know, for folks that are in the same vein maybe as you were in the past and they're, they see Orleans, they're heavy users of it, and they want to contribute, what's the best way for them to do that? 
So we have a very nice warm Gitto community. So on GitHub and on this chat site called Gitto, Gitto.im, we have a community that comes and talks about things. And so if you find that you want to contribute something, it might even just be a small feature. Like for example, uh, one nice feature is that you can configure some things by putting a little attribute on your grain class, sure. right? And so this was contributed by by someone you know on the other side of the world, and they said, "I want to be able to configure these things this way because it's much more convenient." So they just sure. ask, you know, is this something you might be willing to accept? Start working on it, and then we can, we can help you through the whole process. So even if it's you know Git kind of knowledge, or or if it's you know etiquette around opening PRs and things like that, or coding conventions and and whatnot, um, we we can help you through that. And then get your code in, right? If you've got an idea, maybe we can help you implement it, right? And and some ideas in the past have ranged from very small things or maybe medium-sized things like, um, you know, contributing plugins for the different database backends for streaming or for sure. storage or something like that, or even things which change fundamentals inside of Orleans. Uh, we had a contribution from open source that actually rewrote the whole scheduler, right, in, internally. Um, and so we welcome those kind of things and, and we'll work with you on them. That sounds great. So I'm curious, you, know, you, you, you make it sound like there's a, a ton of great community work that's going on with Orlean. So, mm -hmm. you know, roughly, you know, what, what would you think the current contributors numbers are like active contributors? Like how many people are currently oh, working that's... on Orleans either for a full-time job or for a part-time job for fun, you know, maybe they're outside of Microsoft. So we have a team here at Microsoft, but then outside there are several people who work on, you know, contributing back when, when they say they do consulting work that involves all leans, right? So perhaps they work for a game company um, or they do contracting or things like that, or, or they use all leans in, um, in their own business. It's hard to kind of gauge a number there uh, because it's always a sliding window. Right? Sure, it's like, hey, I need this thing. And so I go and implement that or I need that thing. But we tend to have, you know, several more prominent mainstays as well as a lot of, I like to call them drive-by commits. You know, someone yeah. might just see something more like, I'll take that. And then they'll go and fix that thing. And you might even never see them commit again, right? <laughs> I do a lot of those same kinds of commits as sure. well. But but it, it's hard, hard to put a number on it. Yeah, I guess what I was trying to get from that is, you know, how active the community is, right? It seems like the community is very active. I'm also curious to know just in general, you know, one of the things that I love to do when I contribute to open source projects is I take a look at the documentation. And as a user, I always can, you know, be a quick judge of whether or not a, a, a project is, is really kind of, they, they're thinking like that for their users by how well their documentation is written. So, you know, if folks want to learn more, about uh, Orleans instead of just going out to the GitHub repo, is there some formal documentation somewhere? Yeah, definitely. So we actually keep our documentation in a separate repo just because it's a little easier to organize it that way. Sure. So there's the Orleans GitHub repo, but there's also the Orleans-docs repo, uh, and that has all the source for the documentation. But you can go and look at the pre-compiled version of that online. Uh, it's, it's all docfx. And, and so you can go and follow that conceptual documentation and, and tutorials and whatnot over there. And again, of course, we welcome we welcome contributions there. Yeah, I, as somebody who has worked with open source projects a lot, I think you know most contributors and maintainers, they love when people want to help contribute to docs because as developers, I think you know we're the last people that want to write like a lot of technical documentation. Mm -hmm. um, we just like to write code. So, you know, it's one of those things also where if you don't feel comfortable committing to Orleans from a code standpoint, maybe because it's a little bit outside of your, your breadth, if you're a heavy user of it and you kind of know a lot about the platform, it's heavily recommended to contribute to docs, right? Yeah, definitely. And even small things like, you know, sometimes you, you get typos, right? And yeah. Little things like that, everything is appreciated. Yeah. Also, I'm curious to know just in general, you know, getting back to the, the technology stack of Orleans, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, what are the what are the things that have just, you know, been introduced to the platform recently and what are things that are coming in the future that Feeks both saw about? Oh, that's a good one. Okay, so recently we've had one interesting one is deeper integration with Kubernetes. So we have a a, a plugin essentially which allows you to tell 
Orleans more about the Kubernetes environment. So we can sense, you know, based on the Kubernetes environment, who are the other clusters, sorry, who are the other silos around? And it can ask sure. Kubernetes for more information there. Um, so that's one nice one. Um, it's more of a nicety than something that's required, but it's a nice thing to have. Another one is um, some improved stability uh, for clustering itself. So there are some rare cases where you can say, I get it a little bit, bit technical, but uh, the of way course. that Orleans forms clusters is that essentially each one of the app instances is going to be monitoring other instances, right? And so they, if say if one of these disappears, then when they're monitoring it, they're not getting responses back in time. And sometimes you might be accusing another instance of being down when actually sure. it's you that's slow. So. If there's a network problem that's just isolated to you, or if you've got, um, you know, very slow processing because of, let's say, thread pool blocking, then you might start saying, "Hey, you're down, you're down, you're down." Um, it's a very rare kind of case, but it, it can happen, and so we sure. have extra extra resiliency against that now. And that's a recent uh, change, I think, in the last few months. But another kind of a bigger one that's kind of lower level as well. Yeah, I it's just as completely unrelated to the technology of Orleans. I just love the nomenclature of the different things that are named, right? Silos and grains. It definitely makes it feel like it has nothing to do with technology at all, right? Yeah. Do, do you know a little bit about the backstory of that? I'm curious. I, I don't know exactly where it originated, but I, I think that the team uh, at the time were looking for a good analogy for it. So sure. when Orleans was first released, these things weren't referred to as actors. The, the term yeah. virtual actor, which is like the taxonomical way of referring to a grain in the literature, that wasn't even that wasn't even up uh, there yet. And so they instead they said, okay, we want something which refers to you know this little encapsulation of behavior and state in this little unit, and then we want to talk about something which holds that, right? And so we had grains, which is like these little tiny things, and then they live in silos, it's like a grain silo on a farm. Yeah. Right? Um, and so the server in Orleans is referred to as a silo, right? Mm -hmm. And the little things inside of it are called grains. Yeah, I mean, it's brilliant. I think it, it harkens back to, you know, when you, you know, a long time ago, people used to give their servers, maybe they even still do, like their servers silly yeah. names. Like I remember yeah. at the university I went to, all the servers in the in the department were named after different you know ships in in yeah. various science fiction television shows, right? Like that's always a, a go to for folks. But I think using the analogy of of farming with grains and silos, it's it's quite actually equates very very well to what the actual microservice architecture looks like in general for most yeah. implementations. Yeah. I, I think one of the things that's also really exciting about Orleans, you know, you mentioned, you know, the fact that it's written in C sharp and it's for microservices, which, as a lot of folks know, is really important for, or not important as much as interesting right now. You know, so for folks that maybe aren't quite familiar with microservices, right? Do you do you see Orleans as a as an an interesting, I guess, bridge between microservice architecture for folks that are .NET developers by trade? Yeah. So. You can refer to, actually, the first time I ever heard microservices, it must have been years and years and years ago. And, sure. and actually, the speaker was talking about actors. They were talking about ACA actors on, on Scala, right? And so they said that, hey, these actors, they're like little microservices, mm -hmm. right? But then comparing actors, which is very similar in size to a grain, comparing that to a microservice today, it, it really, it's more like a nano service, right? Like it, sure. if you think of a grain or actor as like a, a nano service and you've got this infrastructure which where you've got a nano service architecture, right? These tiny little things are communicating with each other. Now you could say that Orleans is kind of like a, a platform for building those kinds of systems, or you could just use Orleans as a part of a regular traditional, I guess it's not really traditional given how new uh, microservices is, but as a part of a regular kind of a microservice architecture. So, sure. you know, maybe one service inside of my microservice architecture runs or leans, but the others don't. And they can sure. just communicate to it using HTTP or gRPC or yep. SignalR or whatever they would like. That's awesome. I mean, it sounds to me like Orleans is, you know, it does a lot of interesting things, especially for .NET folks, because... Uh, as somebody who's been a .NET developer their entire career, 
you know, the, just the thought of having to, you know, work with different languages, not just in different languages, but different architectures of services, you know, whether it be microservice based or event based, right? There's other programming languages that people de facto go to, to write in those particular tools, right? And, but, you know, having a .NET implementation that does something just as valuable and just as, uh, I, I would say, just as interesting, it's super exciting, especially as somebody who is always trying mm -hmm. to learn new different intricacies of ways to do things with .NET, I see Orleans as one of a great example to do so. Yeah, yeah. I think it's very interesting for someone who's not really used to that kind of way of thinking with, with say, grains or spreading objects around the cluster and maybe is, let's say they're more used to message passing, right, or, or sure. queue processing instead. So I think it's good to get a different feel for different different architectures and different styles, especially in distributed systems. I think it, it's an interesting way to just improve improve learning All right all that sounds great so as we wrap up I, I want you know some folks to be aware so what are the the top places to go to to get started with orleans do we have a website or just go to take them to the github repo so the, the github repo has a readme that takes you through an introduction on that um there's also a, a website which is at the um at the docs page essentially it's uh, .net .github .io forward slash Orleans. And so that'll walk you through all the conceptual docs as well as tutorials and, and some reference docs as well. And then if you have any questions, there's GitHub discussions. There's also GitHub issues. But as I mentioned before, there's the Gitter room. And so if you don't feel like my question maybe is, you know, maybe it's too basic, you, you think, or or whatever the case, you know, nothing is nothing is too simple or you shouldn't be embarrassed about asking any kind of question there. Everyone will be happy about that. So. Awesome. So, Ruben, I want to thank you so much for hopping on Project Spotlight and talking to us about Orleans. Again, so Orleans, it's the GitHub repo under the .NET organization, so it's a part of the .NET Foundation. So as we close, I'd like to kind of get your thoughts as a contributor or maintainer how the .NET Foundation is, has helped Orleans, and if you're, you know, whether it be working with signing or working with different ways of documentation or just you know having something behind it. Like, What are your general thoughts about the foundation helping Orleans? Yeah, I think that the foundation's role in in making a, a better, bigger, more inclusive .NET that also is focused forward on adding on new developers, right, is very important. And and of course, that's aside from things like you mentioned, signing, and and other facilities like that that are very useful. But I, I think the .NET Foundation's role in just nurturing the ecosystem is, is really something that can't be understated. Awesome. Again, Ruben, thank you so much for hopping on Project Spotlight. You know, for everybody else, you know, please check out Orleans. I, I'm super excited to get a little bit more custom with it. I, I played with it, it feels like years ago now, maybe two or three years ago, but I imagine things have substantially changed since then. So um, I'm going to be busy for a little bit. Again, Ruben, thank you so much. Thanks, Isaac.